when talk about the minds of China, I'd like to start from tasty Chinese food. In this beautiful fall season, my favorite food is always crabs. The most expensive and the famous crabs are hairy crabs from Yangcheng Lake in Suzhou City. This year, this lake produces less than 1,200 tons hairy crabs a year. But the Yangcheng Lake crabs, the quantity of that in the market is so much more than that. So when you look at the so-called Yangcheng Lake crabs on your dining table, you may ask whether these crabs are really from Yangcheng Lake or somewhere else. It is difficult to tell. But I can have a method to tell whether it's really from Yangtze Lake or not. I'm Huang Fang, a geochemist working at the University of Science of Technology of China, which is called USTC. Because the crabs need many metal nutrients to grow, some of its chemical composition is similar to the place where they grow up. So in this case, we can measure strontium isotopes for crabs from different locations to see the difference. It is challenging to measure small amounts of strontium, crabs, legs, and shells. But my team can routinely do this, so we can analyze strontium isotopes for crabs. Now you may wonder, who is this man, and why study crabs so much? Well, I'm a geochemist. But what does geochemists do? We do two things. First, we study the chemistry of the Earth, such as chemical composition and the properties. Second, we use the chemical knowledge to understand the Earth in the past, the present, and the future. For instance, geochemists can tell you the age of the Earth is 4.56 billion years, close to the moon. And we can also examine chemical composition or chemical pollution of our water for precious clues to improve our environment. So, my team's original idea was to study cycle of metal nutrients in living organisms. But conveniently, as you can see, this method can be used to tell whether I got real young to lake crabs or not. As a geochemist, I love to understand every interesting aspect of our Earth from the core to the crust from the oceans to the continents, from the soils to the rocks. It's just so exciting to decipher some little secrets of our Earth based on my work. So as you can see, I have a cool job I really love and good at. So working as an Earth scientist was my dream. For this purpose, I left USCC in 2002 in Hefei for the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign for my PhD in geology, and then to Zurich, Switzerland for postdoc. In the nine years in the States and the Switzerland, I learned how to tackle scientific questions, think critically, and how to build up a nice team. I really appreciate what America and Switzerland give to me. And they are both great nations, I love them. But I still wanted to go back to my home country, just like many founding fathers of our USDC many years ago. I can make a long list for the reason for coming back, such as my parents, my friends, my careers, and of course, delicious food. But I mean, not the reason at all, just because it's China. That is enough. So when I'm skilled enough 
and ready. I just went back home. Amazingly, Chinese government and the Chinese Academy of Science provide general support to young scientists. The central government has the 1,000 talented youth program. The CES has the 100 talented youth program. The name sounds a bit strange in English, right? Don't worry, it's also strange in Chinese. But whatever, they do provide critical support to me. So I have enough funding to set up a world-class lab. I have enough salary to support my family. I have enough freedom and resource to do the best research. Compare to the situation 15 years ago when I left China, there is tremendous improvement in research uh, facilities and the quality. The mass spectrometer I'm using in my lab for isotope analysis is so much better in sensitivity and stability than the old one in the lab where I got my degree in the United States. And this is not a special case. Most importantly, I have the best students who are smart and hardworking. We grow together. All this policy in these supporting programs actually reflect the nice aspect of traditional Chinese culture. We respect knowledge, talent the people, and the teachers. Just like me, many students go back to China after they graduate from the States and Europe, forming the largest returning trend of the educated elites in Chinese modern history. I'm working at USTC, which is famous as the cradle of scientific elites. This university is really emphasizing the cutting edge research. So my work has to be excellent. In the last two decades, people can analyze many stable isotopes for metal elements, such as iron. Iron is very important in your blood, or vanadium. In my lab, my team is one of the few in the world which can precisely measure vanadium. This is a very cool job. So my team can address a number of fundamental scientific questions, such as variations of oxygen content in the atmosphere, forming of large ore deposit, and evolution of our Earth. This is the new field I'm focusing on. My work should also be beneficial to our society and the nation. After the Chinese economy has been booming for more than 30 years, the pollution is getting more attention. For instance, in some provinces in South China, because of exploration of heavy metal ore deposits, some waters and uh, soils are contaminated by heavy metals. One of the most toxic elements is cadmium, which can be absorbed by the rice. If people get poisoned by cadmium, they will be in terrible pain. So we can use cadmium isotopes to fingerprint where it is from and how we can remove it. It is also challenging to measure small amounts of cadmium from soil or water samples. But just a few weeks ago, my team successfully obtained precise and accurate cadmium data, which provide us a key to understand or to the future of repairing polluted soil. This will be really good for our nation. Since I came back in 2011, I've built up a wonderful team. 
with about 40 people, including research associates, postdocs, and uh, graduates, of course, undergraduates. Some of them also got degree from Europe or United States. I'm just so proud of my colleagues and students who are working hard with no fears of difficulties or challenges. My team has gained strong reputation about data quality, top tier research, and collaboration with the best people in the world. My team is making progress, breakthroughs in all projects. So this year, my team has published more than 10 articles in top journals in my field, showing that the work of my team meets the world-class standards. And please remember, my team is still so young, so it's just the beginning. We will surely do better in the future. As a professor working in the university, my key duty is always training best students. As Confucius said, the teachers should be patient and good at guiding students. I will try my best to teach my students the right way of thinking and the necessary technique to do the best research. I'm proud of the achievement of my students. In only three or four years, some of them published more than what I could in my whole PhD program for five years in the United States. This is not because I'm lazy or stupid, just because they are lucky to have much better working conditions, which is, by the way, provided by me. <laughs> yeah. Indeed, the talented youth have never been valued as much as now. The youth got enough support from everywhere. This is good for my students. Of course, also good for China. So I believe this culture and the policy will produce innumerable engineers and the scientists, which are exactly the needed momentum for rejuvenation and the prosperity of China. As the great scholar Liang Qichao said 120 years ago, if its youth is knowledgeable, China will be knowledgeable. If its youth is strong, China will be strong. So if my students have bright future, China will have bright future. I'm confident to see that after a long setting back for more than 100 years, China will eventually catch up and outstrip many developed countries in no time. The past was long and full of obstacles, but we can go even further with our hard work. Now I have new dreams. I hope to make our world better with our great minds and diligent hands. In this new world, I hope we will be the one to make our air clean, to make our water safe, we will try our best and hope our kids happier, healthier. This is how the hard work pays off. I know there is a long way for China and for us to go. But if my work can help our nation get stronger and our people happier, that will be my great pleasure. So this is my mind, and also one of the minds of China. Thank you. <laughs>